right. Welcome, kings and queens. Today, we are talking Maurice Scott. I won't be long, at least I hope. <laughs> I am going to review and break down uh, his interview that he did with Carlos King. Y'all, that was horrible, in my opinion. Maurice, Maurice, Maurice. I was like, oh my gosh, what were you thinking? You know, I've actually thought to myself and I've asked myself, were the Scots raised in an attic? Because there is no way you were raised in the real world, speaking, thinking, and talking like that. Which leads me to believe you may surround yourself with a bunch of yes men and a bunch of wingmen that are not going to reel you in and say, bro, check yourself. That sounds real crazy. That sounds real barbaric. Um, I was, oh, that interview was so creepy and chilling and very telling regarding his ideology towards women. And also your struggles, Maurice, you, you have some trauma, you have some issues going on. I, I'm going to guess the fact that you cannot go without sex, you need sex to survive, sir. That's an issue. There is something horribly wrong with you that your wife who was diagnosed with cancer had to give you sex and you gave her a red ribbon award because she sacrificed her body to please you. And you said that's admirable because she did it to fulfill my needs. Y'all we're going to get into this review. A couple of things that I, I just wanted to touch on really quickly. Uh, yeah, so let's get into it. For those of you who are just tuned in or if you're new to the channel, welcome to the palace. I am Queen Sheba. I cover a variety of hot topics specific to reality television. But most importantly, I hone in on the psychological and the behavioral traits of the black experience. Subscribe now. Let's get into this interview. Um, I am obsessed with straight black man's podcast. We've been understood that you um, are obsessed with straight black men. Yeah. We discovered that, what, four or five years ago? Not only that, why does it even have to come down to being straight and black and a man? How come you just can't say which podcast you really enjoy? I'm just curious. I, like you said, we both grew up with black fathers who were the head of the household, you know, very traditional, brought home the bacon. Our mothers were housewives. They took care of the family because we both come from large families of siblings. And I'm always interested in how straight black men think. I'm confused by that. You have six brothers and you had a father who's straight because obviously he produced nine children. So why is it that you are curious about how straight black men think when you were raised in a two parent household by what you deem as a traditional man. That's the first thing. The second question is what constitutes tr traditional? Because according to you, Carlos, you broke down on bell collectives reunion because you said you had an issue with black men who tend to step on the necks. You didn't utilize this language, but I am black men that punish or give black women, successful black women, a hard time for being great because you experienced or this reminded you of your family dynamic. So which one is it? Was your father traditional or was he abusive? And that's, that's why I say y'all, are we now coining the term abusive to mean traditional? Is that a cover up? Because you said something completely different, Carlos. I think Love and Marriage, Huntsville, is the number one show on own, congratulations, is because it's an opportunity for the world, especially women, to hear how men are thinking. Black women around the world are not tuning into your show because they want to hear how black men think. They would never come to you or your cast. Martel Holt 
is accused of plotting a revenge SEX tape against his ex-wife, we would never tune in to hear from a man that forces his wife to have sex with him while she's fighting cancer. We would never do that. So how did you label yourself <laughs> as the go-to that black women come to to learn from these men on the show? Because we don't. And we don't give a damn what they think. When we first met Monster, Monster was this cute kid, right? Mm -hmm. Like this cute kid who was just trying to figure out this, this stepmom that he had in terms of this is my new normal. This man is now a teenager. He's a, he's a man. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, before I get to the question, a lot of people are upset that y'all still call him Monster. And they, they, want, they want you to stop calling this black man a monster. What do you have to say about that? First of all, he's not a man. He's a child. And that's like a man looking at a young girl that age and saying that's a woman. Carlos, you really need to check yourself because you're very reckless with your language. That is not a man. Because if you were talking about a teenage girl, you would not be referring to her as that, that woman. Y'all get what I'm saying? is wrong. That's a young boy. That's an adolescent. He's 16 years old. He is a boy, not a man, just like a 16 year old girl would be a girl and not a woman. Monster is a very polarizing figure, right? And if, if they call 50 cent monster, everybody would be like, man, monster, I'm here doing it, right? As you are glorifying somebody else's life and personifying as if that's your son, your son is not 50 cent. He's asking you about your son, not about a celebrity. You see how the Scots have this glorified impression or perspective. Uh, 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 Y'all get what I'm trying to say. Hell, sir, you live in La La Land. Your son is none of that. He's a 16 year old boy. It's polarizing because you can also see a person in prison. They'll call him a monster, right? He's going to be a monster. He's already a monster too. We're going to wrap this up real quick. I just wanted y'all to see how crazy this interview was and how the Scott boys are somewhat off and they don't even know it. Um, and then he talks just like his brother, Mark, and he sat there and smiled and waited for his, for his reward, his round of applause. Maurice, you did not eat. You did not eat. That was horrible. You dropped the ball on that one. Me and my six brothers were not responsible for cleaning. My sisters were. We were responsible for shoving the snow, taking out the trash, and doing quote unquote manly stuff. Is that your thought process when it comes to your son? Do you listen to yourself when you talk? You said that you and your six brothers were not responsible for helping around the house. Y'all were responsible for doing manly stuff. So your mama and your sisters had to pick up your dirty drawers and come in your room and clean your room and make sure you were provided for and you had a decent and a clean and an organized space to live because you were a man. All you had to do between the six of you was take out the trash and uh, shovel the snow. Y'all, how often does it snow? Compared to, you know, the rest of the year, the different seasons? Exactly. That's a horrible example. I, I, I can't make this up. You just heard it here. But I, 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 can't, I can understand how that could be perceived. Right. It's just not, I'll be honest with you, man. The, cl the cleanliness of your room is not that high on my list. Right. Uh he, he doesn't care about the type of environment or how dirty and dusty and nasty his son's room is. Okay. It's not important to him because that's a woman's job to see after him, which makes, which, which in turn would make monster monster a horrible husband. Imagine that. Imagine him growing up and I'm not calling him a horrible boy, but I'm just saying, let's just say monster adheres to Maurice's teachings. That's somebody that's going to marry one of your daughters. Imagine your daughter coming home after work, having to cook, having to tend to the children, do homework, make love to him, and then go pick up after his ass. And still have to get up in the morning and drive the kids to school, make them breakfast, make his coffee. Y'all, I'm not making this up. Let's move on. You like to have sex, if not every day, multiple times a day. Last season, you got red for foot, my brother, because of not getting banged every day. Right? Like, you want to have sex every day. Your wife, obviously, is going through. How did it feel to know that the world is now witness to the fact that your wife admitted that sometimes she fakes her orgasms? Not a person who wants sex. Now, at times, I don't want it, but I actually need it. So... Life throws us curveballs like what we're going through right now. 
And what Kimmy is doing is admirable as a spouse. To roll over and suffer through it, um, I was hoping it wouldn't be a suffering. Suffer through it, fakes it, all for me. Because at that moment, it's something that she completely didn't desire, right? And it, I kind of look at it as if, and this is, you know, all jokes aside, I look at it as her standing by me while I'm standing by her. Ladies, y'all be careful out there. It's real. This man just said, for her to roll over while she got cancer and suffer through him getting off, pumping and dumping inside of her is extremely admirable because the way he sees it is she owes him that because he's standing by her while she has cancer. The least she can do is muster up strength, open her legs and stand by him. Y'all, I can't make this up. I damn near threw up in my mouth. But this is this is this is what we're looking at. Please, please, ladies. Don't rush into marriage. Make sure that you're connecting with God. Make sure that you are uh, not wanting a piece of man because you feel a piece of man is better than no man at all. Because you may find yourself in a situation where you are fighting for your life because of a dire condition. And you have a man like this that feels like you should sacrifice and stand by him because he stood by you. Lord, have mercy. I cannot make this stuff up. They think it's funny.